Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, August 7th, 2015. Can we were in August already? This is great. Uh, I am James Law Jr., the Super Organizer, and you're listening to Super Organizer Universe Radio. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I was just in Dallas, Texas for my sister's wedding and to see my cousin Jason for his birthday, and it was hot. It was hot, hot, hot. And so I'm so glad to be home where it's still hot (laughs) here in L.A. (laughs) I can't escape the heat. It's crazy. It's making me crazy. So before I even continue, of course, I'd like to say good morning to my engineer, partner in all things, electronical. Is that a word? Mr. Brian. Electronical could be a word. Uh, You know, know here on this show, I make up words like unifocal and things like that. So I wasn't sure. I think electronical is a word. That sounds correct. <laughs> I will look that up later. Or if you guys find me you know, on Twitter and stuff, you can tell me how wrong I was. <laughs> yeah, let us know. <laughs> let us know. Well, good morning. So, yes, it's going to be another All Tips show today. And it's me, all me today. That's right, all James Law Jr. for the next hour. And so I got some great feedback from you guys last time um, liking the tips. And that's what we're here for, to help you out mentally organizationally, as I keep making up words. I love it. But of course, as I always do before I begin anything else, I like to give my great, my thanks and gratitude. And this one actually is um, a special After Buzz TV edition of Thanks and Gratitude. Uh, I joined After Buzz family uh, kind of through the back door, I would say. I was a guest fill-in co-host for the Days Are Our Lives after show. They started in February, and I came in in uh, March and did a show. And so actually, it was my first time hosting on air live. And for some reason, I wasn't nervous. It was really weird. I just kind of I was just very excited, and I was very appreciative to be in a situation to talk about a show that I've watched for thirty something years. We won't say how long. I mean, I was negative two when I started watching it, of course, but you know. And I get to talk about a show that I really enjoy. And do it on camera. It's crazy. Um, so I did the first show, loved it, hooked, 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 hooked. And then, um, I'm sorry. And then I started doing more, doing more filling in. And about two months into it, I got to know everybody, talking to everybody there. And they're like, oh, James, why don't you go through the process <laughs> and actually become a, a host here at After Buzz TV? So I did. And I went through the process, and they, they brought me on. And I, I have some other things going on with them that I'm working on. And so as of now, I've been there, like I said, since March. I host – right now I'm hosting about eight different shows. I just did six shows in a, basically in the last two days, and then I'm here today. Um, that's all live stuff. They have like, a, 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 like 300 after shows of all the shows that you kind of watch on TV or watch on Hulu or Netflix and the other, other medium. And uh, so now I get to produce and write and host. And it's, it's just it's a dream realized, another dream realized. It's just amazing. And I just love the people there. And I want to give a little um, shout-out to all of them because they're so nice. They're great. And they, I just appreciate the opportunity. I want to thank Kevin Undergaro, Maria Menounos, um, who began this whole project of After Buzz TV. They're all about self-broadcasting. That is the now is the thing to do. And, of course, you know those names. They're out there. Especially Maria Menounos, they're out there. And she has great opportunities. And Phil Sweetek, who and the staff at AfterBuzz, the, the engineers, producers like Steve and Alexis, they're great people. They assist us when we do every show. It's so much fun. And I want to thank all of my co-hosts. Now, like I said, I do a bunch of shows. I'm going to name their names. They'll go by fast. Don't worry. But I'm going to name their names because I love working with every single person that I do a show with. It's kind of pretty. It's pretty amazing because I some of the shows I kind of came on as a last minute fill in, or someone said, "Why don't you join our show and you know try it once?" And now I'm working with them, and I love every single co-host that I work with. So here we go. I'm just gonna say their first names because I just I don't want to go on forever. So Cameron, Jordana, Patrick, Jennifer, Lauren, and Lauren, Johnny, Nicholas, Jackie B. Amanda, Kanika, 
Vivian, and of course, three people that I kind of brought on, Frank, Ladine, and Lucretia. They've been, and all three have been on my show. You guys don't know that. And last but not least, and in the in the least at all, the two people who I work with on the Dish and Day show, which is the Days of Our Lives recap show, and the reason why the door was open and I got in, now it's Tony Moore and Mark J. Freeman. I get to work with them on, on every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on AfterBuzzTV.com. Shameless plug. And we also do um, a thing called Spotlight On, where we actually interview some of the past Days of Our Lives cast members. And that's been a lot of fun. I've been doing that with Tony. It's been a lot of fun. I love you guys all, and I feel like um, friendships are really being made and connections are being made, and I will follow you guys anywhere. You guys are just, just the greatest. And I look forward to working with more hosts and doing things on the channel. They have a thing called Popcorn Talk, which I'm doing a few things with, and Black Hollywood Live, and it's just it's just an exciting opportunity. And I just feel great. I feel grateful. Just feel grateful completely. So I just want to say that to them. So you never know what opportunities will bring and where they will take you. And so it's an exciting part of the journey for me now, my new act. So like I said, we're going to go into some uh, tips and things going on. But first, I thought, okay, I've been doing this show for a couple months now, just about. And for those of you out there who are listening and don't really know what a professional organizer is, I thought, let me respond to some questions that I get a lot of times about what is a professional organizer or what do we do. But let's start out with that because as we continue and progress with the show, I'm going to give you more tips and juice you to more people. But let's talk about what is a professional organizer. What do we do? So the first question I always get is, what is a professional organizer? <laughs> like That's the first question. So the kind of the, the, the clinical answer you could say is a professional organizer is someone that helps you to overcome clutter and disorganization. Okay, so that's I think that's simple enough. You're in a space where it's, it's cluttered, it's just or disorganized, and a professional organizer is a professional who will help you unclutter or declutter, or as we say sometimes now, edit what you have and bring organization to your life. Another one is this is actually this is actually a really important one. Why hire a professional organizer? Because, you know, it's funny. I've noticed that a lot of people look at professional organizing as an elective thing. It's like a cousin to a housekeeper, you know, maid service, um, they're a you know, gardener. I mean, there are things that people feel like, I should be doing it myself. <laughs> you know, why should I hire somebody? And, uh, and so it's not seen sometimes as important as maybe a doctor, you know, or, you know, or a plumber when something goes out. I mean, like, but you don't realize it really is important. A well-run house changes everything. A, an organized life changes everything. And just you work, you work smarter, not harder. And, you know, basically, when you hire an or a professional organizer, many times we are trained to help you organize your situation. Um, we can create systems that are organized also to help you keep it that way. You know, also we're there for support. Many of my clients will tell you, I, I half the battle for them, because some of them do know how to be organized. They, do, they know how to organize, just that it's having that other person there as like a cheerleader. A person there that's, that's a motivator. That just a person in kind of in your space, in your face, saying, yes, let's do it. We can do it. Come on, you know, come on, girl. I mean, my folks know. I will tell you, let's, let's do it. You know, you can do it. Let's get that pile of paper. Let's do that pile of paper staring at me. And they went and saying, please organize me, please. And so I'm there to help you through that process by just being there. You know how to throw a paper. You know how to separate. I mean, it's your stuff. So I'm not, sometimes I don't know what exactly you need. You know it. But you need a person just next to you, sitting next to you, supporting your decision to work that paper. So, it's, I mean, this is very important. So we're there to help you throughout the entire process. So we are, we are, we are support. So getting a professional organizer may help you introduce to you things that you may not know. That would help you run your life better. So that's good. What are the benefits of being organized or getting organized? Well, you'll find you'll have less and less stress. You'll have more time and less stress. How's that? Sounds good to me, right? I, I like to not be stressful or stressed out. 
and being organized, you will know where everything is located. Just about, right? You'll know where it is. I mean, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's great. You know where the strainer is in the, in the kitchen. So it takes you two steps to go to the strainer because it's in the place where it should be. And more than likely, it's in a place that's accessible and makes sense in your kitchen when you're cooking. Think about that. Everything in the bathroom is where it is. You need to find the medications, you have a place where medications are. You need to find the cleaning products, you know where the cleaning products are. It just, it just saves so much time trying to look. We, you know, we had a guest on our before saying people take 17 minutes to like find things. That's 17, 17 minutes. Think about that, 17 minutes. 10 minutes. Five minutes. You know, when you, if you sat and just counted five minutes out, it's way longer than you think it is. Think about that. Also, it'll help you make your life easier and more importantly, happier. For me, I mean, I just think when I see a organized home, and I've seen it in my clients too, it just, I feel instantly a smile comes to my face. My heart rate goes down. I mean, it just, it just feels so much better. My eyes rest. That's another thing too, because when you have a lot of stuff everywhere, you, your eyes, you have to look at it all. And you have to see it. When it's kind of away and it's in a space, it just feels calmer. I just, I think, I just think it's, I just, I firmly believe your life, you will feel better and happier. It doesn't solve all your problems, obviously, in your life. I can't talk about your relationships or anything like that. But I'm just telling you, in your home, in your office, where it should be your sanctuary, that's where it should be nice and organized. So you just go right to what you need. I just, I just think it makes you feel better. And also, basically, as I think we know, disorganization affects many parts of your life. Sometimes they say, you know, a cluttered house, a cluttered mind. Um, so I don't know if you ever heard, they'll say that your space reflects your life, like where you are in your life right now sometimes. It just, I mean, it's, I just think, again, I'm going to always be an advocate for organization. Will I have to throw my stuff away? That's, uh, that's like one of the top questions I get all the time. I think a lot of people just, real, just first think, organizer, I have to throw away my stuff. Now, I, don't, I can't speak for every organizer in the business because I'm not the voice of every organizer in the business. But I can speak for myself, and that's not always the case for me. My philosophy is that you have the final say in what you like to keep and what you want to get rid of. I respect your stuff. It is completely up to you. My job, I feel, is to make it fit in your space the best way possible. So that doesn't mean that I won't tell you I can't make it work because I'm not a, I'm not a magician. There are times where it's like, okay, you have to do something because I've shown you four or five different ways and I can't make it exactly the way you want it. So you may have to edit some stuff out and get rid of it. Just may, just may have to, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, a fact of life, but it's not automatic. I'm not just saying, okay, get out, just get, just, you're done. I respect your stuff. And, and I can speak for many organizers. They respect your stuff. We know it's yours. We know there's some sentimentality to some of the stuff. Um, there's some, some stuff that you're using that you haven't used. I find for me, in my practice, a lot of times it's just things aren't put away correctly. Spaces are misused. I use an example for on the show – the drawer system. The two top drawers are full with socks and underwear. That are pot- you can't even close the drawers. The bottom two drawers have like one pair of socks and a sweater. Because a lot of times in habit forming, we go to the nearest thing. So if, it's, if, it's, if the top drawers are at height level, right nearby, you're just putting stuff in there because you just reach it. No one's going to bend over or anything. But if you really actually spaced it all out, you probably have plenty of room for those socks and underwear on those bottom drawers. So a lot of times it's just placement. Closets too. Everything's shoved on one side. It's not if you fold it a certain way or hang it a certain way or maybe change the placement, put the shoes on that side. I mean, more room opens up. So it's not always about throwing it out. It's about it really is about organization. So I so for me, I don't I always advocate throwing things out. Um there are times when I will suggest to you or invite you <laughs> to think about maybe getting rid of something or donating it or whatever. But 
those are more extreme circumstances. And actually, in a future show, we'll talk about kind of the whole going through stuff and what you should keep and that kind of stuff. But no, an organizer is not always about throwing it away. So we are going to continue um, talking about some more of the questions. There's a few more questions left, and we're going to talk about more of what uh, – why you should have a professional organizer in your life. Because I, I believe you should always have one in your life. And, of course, I'm one for hire here in the Los Angeles area. You know, let's go to superorganizer.com and find out what I'm doing. But we will continue talking about um, the questions I get as a professional organizer after we come back in a few moments. I'm Edward James Olmos. I'm here to talk to you about RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. Think about it. You have choices that you can make in your life, good choices and bad ones. Drinking and driving, bad choice. Why? The life you may take may even be your own. Think about it. Drinking and driving doesn't mix. Get a designated driver. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. So, I'm a dog, and I just got adapted by this new human guy, and I'm starting to wonder how he got along without me. I mean, okay, something as simple as walking around the block. He's got this leash thing, and he puts me on one end and him on the other, and I'm just taking him around. I I think he's afraid of getting lost. Without that leash and me guiding him along, I don't think he'd find his way back home. But it's kind of cute. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Los Pollos, home of flavor down to the bone chicken. As we say in Spanish, el sabor hasta el último huesito. At Los Pollos, we serve delicious Cuban slash Mexican marinated chicken. We are cooking our chickens in rotisserie ovens to give you a well-seasoned, well-marinated, well-cooked, delicious chicken. We have three locations to serve you. In the city of Bell, we are located in 6201 Atlantic Avenue on the corner of Randolph and Atlantic. In the city of East L.A., we are located on 5161 Pomona Boulevard on the corner of Atlantic and Pomona Boulevard. And in the city of Downey, we are located on 7940 East Florence Avenue in the corner of Paramount and Florence. Come to Los Boils and experience the most delicious chicken that you'll ever have the pleasure of eating. We are back. This is Super Organizer Universe Radio. I'm James Law Jr., the Super Organizer, and we are talking about... Um, questions that I get as a professional organizer, and hopefully you're actually getting some great insights. So maybe if you're thinking about getting a professional organizer, now you will get one. Of course, always screen professional organizers. If you need references, you know, ask them and that kind of stuff. But these are some general questions that we get, just in case you don't know what it is we do. So to continue, um, one is, do I need to be there during the session? Now, that's something that's really it's, it's, it's interesting. I say in the beginning, of course, because you have a consultation, and we'll talk. And but in the beginning, I say yes. I you know, I need you to be there to help sort your belongings. We do it together. I want to create systems with you. One of the things that I do in my practice is I make everything unique to you. So I really do listen to you. I take notes. I listen. I watch, and I try to create systems. You know, in general, I have, you know, I have some tricks of the trade and things like that, but systems that I know will work for you. Because once I leave, it's your house or your space or your, your company or whatever. So you got to make sure that you, when I leave, when you're looking for the socks, you can go to the socks. Or a certain file, that that file is labeled exactly the way you would think about it if you were in a hurry. And so I create things very specific to each of my clients. And that's very important in the beginning that you need to be there obviously. So we can kind of do it together and kind of go over it. Um, Once I know what you would like and kind of what the guidelines are, then there's times you cannot be there. I can do the rest. Um, Even if you're not there, I will always call, text, whatever, uh, send pictures, whatever, 
I never assume anything. That's one of the worst things an organizer can do because it's your stuff. I'm like, wow, that book has a tear in it. I don't think they want that. I mean, just, I'll just, I'll just, they won't miss it. I'll, just, I'll recycle it. And they come home. They're like, where's that book that my, you know, my husband gave me on our wedding nights or you know, whatever, whatever. And it was very important to me. You're like, uh. So, yeah, I never assume anything. So it's completely, yes, be there in the beginning. And afterwards, we can talk about that. And everything, especially, in, and I think all organizers do this, everything's written out, drawn out. The guidelines are there between you and us. So we make sure everything's in writing. How do I get started? Just simply find an organizer. Google it at this point if you need to. Or go to the National Association of Professional Organizers. They have a, a digest. Um, and Or just type in, or me, superorganizer.com. And if you're in a different city, I can lead you to some people in other cities. I have a lot of colleagues that I talk to and are ready to help you and ready to work with you. Um, and you just let, let us know what you need to be, needs to be addressed, you know, what, what are you kind of looking for in an organization, and we'll go from there. Willing to buy supplies. That's another one because it comes with money. So I try to work with whatever you have already. Because um, I believe people aren't maximizing their space, which I talked about before the break. And uh, they're not really maximizing it to the best of its ability or utilizing it to the best it can be. So there are different solutions I have. Now, there are times when we have to get products, like bins and things. And so, again, we will talk about it, work out plans. And now, for me, if you, if you do hire me or come to me, I try to find the best products at the lowest price. So, uh, but I always discuss with my clients exactly pricing and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it's all discussed in the planning process. And here's something that I, I completely have in, like, my bylines and everything. Will my sessions be confidential? Yes. All meetings, conversations, questions are confidential. They're between you and I, the client and I. And if we need to go to an outside source for help, then we will agree together what information is okay to share. Yes, for many people, disorganized space is embarrassing or shameful. And I always say, first, let's get out the door. You shouldn't be embarrassed or shamed at all. It's, just, it's whatever it is. Um, but I do respect your privacy. Again, it's your stuff. It's nobody's business what's going on in there. I'm like, oh, my God, folks, you know, let me tell you about, you know, so-and-so in their bathroom. Their bathroom, it was a mess. And, oh, my God, there were pills everywhere. No, I will never do that at all. Now, if the client lets me talk about the situation for an interview or something, again, it's discussed. There's a consent thing going on. Same with photos. I have photo consent forms. It's all discussed between me and the client because my relationship with the client is number one before we even do anything else. I, again, I said this before, I have the best clients. I love my clients, and I really do want to make sure they feel protected and safe. I'm non judgmental. I mean, all of that. But I'm very confidential. I don't about that at all. So whether it's three, 30 minutes or three weeks, I'm here to help. doesn't matter. We will work out the sessions. You know, uh, some organize, organizers have packages. So please talk to an organizer in your neighborhood, in your area. They're there, they're there to help. Make your life easier. So those are kind of some of the questions that I get um, frequently about what is a professional organizer and what do we do. Now, I'm going to talk about the benefits of having a professional organizer. I'm just going to list some things to you. And you think about this, any of this would, you know, makes makes any sense to you. Um, Because I think there's so many benefits to having a professional organizer in your life. Organizing is a process, and you need to incorporate it into your regular day-to-day life. Um, It shouldn't be something that stands out or set apart like, this is my life, and this is my organizing life. No, 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 not at all. It should be just part of your everyday existence. You brush your teeth, you wash your face, you put away the clothes. I mean, it should all be part of the process. And it shouldn't be like a, just a one-time thing either, in my opinion, or a twice-a-year occurrence. Because I know, I know folks who do the big spring cleaning, and I mean, those are nice and all. But if you create something that's on a regular basis, then you don't have to worry about every March, I got to take two days off and – blank or every august before kids go to school i gotta take you know a week off and blank no if you kind of do it along the way it's it's easier um there are a lot of small quick routines that work 
you know, as well as large sweeping ones, but you know, small routines. And I, you know, and if you read my blog, I'm all about you know starting small is fine. Some organizers are saying start big, but I think for me, I found that there are a lot of small things you can do on a regular basis that lead to a larger result. So here's some of the advantages of having an organizer: a clutter-free, happy home or business environment. Sounds fine, right? I said this earlier. Work smarter, not harder. Be less stressed and more efficient. Control in your life. Who doesn't want control? Not just Janet Jackson from the 80s. The rest of us want control too, right? Accomplish more in less time. Now, isn't that an idea? Especially like in the mornings where we do feel like we're pressed because we were tired. We just got up. The coffee pot's brewing slowly. You're trying to get the kids dressed and, and just there's so much going on. And you got to be out by 8 o'clock. So wouldn't, you, could, wouldn't it be great to have a system in the morning where things are all running smoothly and then you just leave, and you're able to leave the house? Love it. More balance in your life. And here's one, more personal time in your life. We all need more personal time. I could use 12 days a week. And then many of you guys who follow me, you know I'm doing a million things. So anything I could do to get more personal time, organization provides that. Trust and believe James Law Jr. I do 80 things. And like I said before, sense of pride, you know, feeling any shame or guilt, because when everything's in order, there's nothing to feel. It's, it just feel good. Like having me as a personal organizer and many others, um, and like I said, we're non-judgmental. I just have fun. Organizing is work. And I said, remember I said this before and a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, organizing is work. It is. But I try to make it fun. Because it's your stuff and let's, you know, let's do it. I'm here to collaborate i'm here to work with you we're all here to work with you we want you to live the life that you want and every organizer that i have spoken to so far in the last six and a half years we come to this profession because we love it we want to help people we want to assist people we want to be there for people in ways that will enrich their lives and we feel through organization that is that's what we accomplish and we really do enjoy our jobs we love it. It's a profession you have to, you kind of, I think you have to love it to do it. So we, we do that. So those are some of the benefits. Now I'm going to do a little life coaching tip for you. I want you to, I'm going to ask some questions to you, and I want you to think about these things. Because I think in the news recently, um, there's a woman who, um, from Asia who wrote a book, kind of like, almost like the Tiger Mom kind of thing, but on organizing. And uh, I'm right now just bringing out her name, but she uh, talks about what is these things, what do these things feel, what these objects feel, to how they make you feel, what do they do for you, and if you should, and if they feel a certain way, you should get rid of them or keep them, that kind of thing. But in general, I do believe there's some emotion behind stuff, and so I think you need to uh, look at and ask some of these kind of questions to yourself in order to be organized or get organized. Um, I invite you to think about why you're not organized. My thought is that in our beliefs, they can drive our experiences, obviously. If you believe you can't get organized, then that will be your experience, right? But maybe you can figure out one belief that may be limiting your ability to get organized. Sometimes you have a block. And as a life coach, my job is to unblock you. But obviously, you have to do the unblocking, but I have tools to help you get unblocked. So here's some of the questions I always I invite you to ask yourself. Why am I disorganized? I always believe in simple is better. It's just like just simple. Like no complicated question. Just like really, why am I disorganized? Now, the answer may not be simple, but that's a question that just it's just a simple, easy question to ask yourself. How does this clutter make me feel? Now, I always talk about being super honest with yourself. And it really, 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 really is important to think about how does this clutter really make you feel. Um, not surface, but underneath. And you may be surprised to discover some emotions you're not sure that were there, which may help affect, affect change in your life to get declutter here's something what are the top five things that are keeping you from being organized 
Think of, think of five things. Just think of five things. They could be anything. You could say it's work. You could say it's uh, kids. You could say it's my weight. You could say it's my age. I mean, just think, think of five things. They could be superficial to whatever, but just think about them. And one thing, if I could get more organized, how would that feel? Think about that for a second. If you just look around, you're like, if all this was in order and everything was the way I kind of wanted it, how would I feel about that? How would that make my life? And I think it's something you really should think about. Think about kind of projecting the future. I think it's a great idea. And then, do I need assistance in getting organized? Goes back to my last thing about getting an organizer. That one is very important too, because usually if you're asking, you do need one. <laughs> and that's and that's that's, that's I mean, you're asking a question. Like I said, look up a professional organizer in your neighborhood. Um, so those are some things I invite you to ask yourself um, about your disorganization. So I just I didn't think it's just it, being honest with yourself is number one is key 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 key. Did I say key key? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so this is uh, the Super Organizer. You're listening to Super Organizer Universe Radio. We're going to go away for a few moments, but don't worry. I will be back. Hey, this is Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers for Rad. I'm here to remind you that drunk drivers are still a major killer of young adults in this country. So always choose a designated driver. And remember, music lives. You should, too. Getting on in the state of Mississippi. Papa was a copper and a mama was a hippie. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi, everyone. This is Chuck Harold with my co-host, Paul Tally Ho Christo, from Security Guy Radio, regarded as a verb, not a noun. Every Monday night at 7 p.m., we challenge the conventional wisdom of the security industry with our plain talk experience, humorous stories, and answers from the top security experts in the field. Tune in each week for the latest security news, lightning interviews, and a look at a featured security gadget or service. Join us on the web at securityguyradio.com. And listen every Monday night at 7 p.m. exclusively on Adrenaline Radio. Do you love leather? Do you own a piece of fine leather furniture? Do you love the way it feels when you sit in it? Do you want to keep it that way? Because my name is Chris Lawler, and I own Leather Care Services. I'm in the business of restoring and maintaining leather furniture so that you love it as much in 10 years as you did the day that you bought it. Call me at area code 562-693-7676. Remember, Leather Care Services saving cows one hide at a time while cutting molding with a 12 inch dual compound miter saw while holding a newborn baby in your arms when face to face with a congregation of alligators with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line there are a million places you'd never consider texting getting chewed up by so your why would you do it while driving on what nascar driver casey kane here in the asking you to please stop the text and together we can stop the wrecks brought to you by the ad council and the national highway traffic safety administration Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. This song is great because I'm about to talk about something that's uh, music related. Yes, so I love it. You're on Super Organizer Universe Radio here on AdrenalineRadio.com. I'm James Law Jr., the Super Organizer. Yes, the Super Organizer. And there's other organizers I'm sure are super, but I'm the Super Organizer. And uh, my copyright said so. So I do a thing on my blog um, called uh, Music Mondays and uh, because I love music. Music has been my salvation for much of my life. And um, from... The earliest memories, the recesses of my brain, um, my mom and dad played music when I was growing up. Uh, one of the earliest memories I have is my mom playing the Jesus Christ Superstar soundtrack and Peter, Paul, and Mary. I remember those. So I've loved music my whole life. Music, I call, I say, is a key in organizing. Sometimes you need an extra boost, especially when you're by yourself. And I don't know if any of you, when you're cleaning, play music. I do. When I'm cleaning or, or sometimes out in the garden, I'll play music to kind of go along with my mood. Because um, music really does affect you. 
And so I'm like suggesting to folks out there, if you need an extra boost, put on some record that you really like. Now, when a song comes on, like on the radio, if there are people listening to the radio still or on the internet, aren't you usually transplanted back into a time or an event? You'll hear a song... And you're like, oh, my God, I remember when I was like 15 and I skipped school and we went to, you know, Pink's Hot Dogs or whatever. But that song brings that back to you. Not saying that I skipped school at all when I was 15. <laughs> if my mom's listening, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't do that ever. Um, but just that it takes you back to a time. It can, make, it can transport you back to a sad time or a happy time. Does music, for you guys out there, does it affect your mood? When you hear certain types of music, it can make you super aggressive or very docile. Um, and I just, and I, for me, it's just all of the above. It's, it all, it all, you know, as a certain artist, it all, it just, it really does. Um, music can be really important to our mental health too. And uh, I, and I have a, a few clients that we've actually had music in the background, not too loud, you know, not blaring, but it's kind of in the background. Um, that kind of helped us continue the process. For me, I like music that's too distracting, of course. I can't put on, like, you know, Anthrax Metallica while I'm trying to organize. Now, to clean, I can put them on when I'm cleaning. But organize, I need my brain to function a little clearer, <laughs> a little more methodical. So those are bands I can't really put on, though I like both of them, of course. That's a little too much. But because you, you want to do a good job organizing. And you want to make sure it looks, and it, and it looks good and it works for you. So... Um, and I also can't put on music that's too soothing. <laughs> you know, no acoustic alchemy or like guitar or something. It's like it's all new age. It's a little, that's what I do when I go take a bath. You know, I don't, I don't do that when I'm trying to organize. Um, I personally like mid tempo stuff. Uh, things that are kind of in between. Um, now I'm going to show my age, of course, when I name some of these people. But what I find has worked for me is I put on people like Sade. The Spinners. Somebody newer. What was my newer that I actually put on the other day? I think I played Madonna actually the other day. I was something with somebody. It's one of her older albums, like one of her 90s albums. But it's something that's kind of mid-tempo. That just kind of, it plays. You may, and I'm a singer, so I might sing a little bit of it while you're doing it. But it keeps you motivated enough, keeps you bouncy enough to continue the process. Um, I think it helps to play someone you like. Maybe you know all the songs. Um... For me, I like all kinds of music. You know, I I like pop and some country rock, disco dance. You know, I mean, I like all kinds of music. So for me, I have a large music collection. So I would go in and go, okay, I'm gonna pick that out today, and you know, and then play. I'll play some Carol King or something, and then it just it just really it really works. And so I I think anything that can help you with the organizing process is good, right? Um, so I suggest to everybody out there, maybe it's one way to also help yourself organize. Play music. Music's good. There's a lot of music out there. So now back to another organizing tip. And I call I titled this in my in my uh my blog. And all this stuff, everything I'm telling you, everything I'm saying can be found on my blog, the superorganizeruniverse.com. They're all on there. This is what I call I'm tired of the sofa being over there. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. Are you a person who is unsure of change? Is everything exactly the same and in the same place as you first set it up? It's one of those things where you move in, you find, it, you find a spot, you put it in, that's it. Are you open to change yet haven't made a move? Now, you could be tired of the sofa being over there. You could be tired of the table being over there, but you just haven't really do anything about it. I have a suggestion of something you, sh- you can try and see how it makes you feel. First, identify a space or a room that has been the same for a long period of time. An area, especially make, it, make sure it's an area you see every day. So it could be a living room, dining room, mud room, den, one of your bedrooms, whatever. Just a room you see every day. Second, one day or even one night, Take one thing and either take it out completely, leave it blank, or replace it with something else. So 
it could be a picture on the wall or a knickknack on a table. It could be something, you know, it could be something. It could be that African statue you had when you went to Kenya or whatever. Take it out and you place something else. Because rooms do get stale after a while. You kind of get tired of looking at them. You know, so you're like, I've seen, I've seen the same picture for 100 years. And they send you a picture. It could be a picture of your child when they were three and now they're 12. Take the picture out. Put your 12 year old child in the picture. It could be the kid is still three years old. No, no. Um, change the frame. Take it out. Put another frame and put it back on the wall. Just do something different. Um, or there's another thing you can do. Move a piece of furniture. Okay, let's say we start something small. Take that one table, put it on the other side of the room. Let's see what it looks like. Take that sofa, push it against another side, another wall. Take it off of one wall, put it on against another wall. Just see what it looks like. Then leave it like that. Whichever one you do, whether it's taking thing, a thing out and leaving the, the space blank or replacing it or moving a piece of furniture somewhere else in the room, let time pass. So let it sit there for, say, a day or two. So let it sit there. How does it make you feel? Now, you may not like the sofa over there, but did it open up a whole new perspective for you in changing the room? Do you feel any differently away from that space? Does it inspire you to make it, like I said, make it inspire you to make a change? Do you like that new thing in there? You're like, oh, that picture does look good. I'm glad I changed that picture. And when you change that picture or you change that knickknack or you move that sofa, you're like, wow, now the room looks different. Try that. I say try it a few times with different things, see how you feel. The point really is, out of all of this, the point is to invite change in your life. Our home is supposed to be our safe haven and our sanctuary. And our home life can really affect outside the home life. And it can really affect other areas of our lives. Um, but again, something small. Just try that and see if that works for you. I believe in sometimes when you're like, and also when you don't have a lot of money or you're on a budget and you can't go out and buy like all new furniture or can't, you know, paint everything differently. Rearrange some stuff around the same room gets you a different look. There you go. Or take a rug that's in one bedroom and another bedroom. If the colors are similar, switch them out. How's that? Just gives you a little different look there. So there you go. Another tip, and this is something that's just uh, I titled, <laughs> my freezer smells. Time to clean it out. Uh, yes. Sometimes having a routine is good. Sometimes when you designate a time or day to do something and then consistently do it, it becomes second nature. Things get done. And these are a couple of things that are regular things that go on in our homes that we kind of sometimes don't think about much. And you understand, remember uh, last week we were talking about um, – the back of your uh, the, the back of your faucets and the top of your refrigerators. This is kind of a continuation of that. Uh, there are a few things that I noticed myself just being around, looking around the houses, and kind of like, oh, that's what I is what I do. So these are some suggestions of things um, that I think you should do at some point. You should change your sheets on your bed every Sunday and, and Thursday. Now you can pick other days, but I like starting out the beginning of the week with new sheets. You know, Thursday's midway. So you're like, you're getting ready for the weekend. You know, my life on the weekend is much different than my life during the week. So I kind of like that whole idea of just kind of refreshing midweek with new sheets. Clean out the refrigerator every Saturday morning. Isn't that a great idea? Especially if you decide to go shopping, grocery shopping on the weekend. Clean it out. Get in there. Clean it out. I think Saturday morning is a good time. Put on some music and start cleaning. Vacuum every other Tuesday. Now, vacuuming is something that I know people who like to vacuum every other day. I know some people who have animals. Sometimes it's, it's more practical to, to kind of vacuum at least once a week because all the, the hair gets around. Um, for me, you know, depending on how messy, I vacuum every other Tuesday. Just about. And then when I say these certain days, you can change the days out on some of them. But in this one, I'm like, it's Tuesday. Why not? Tuesday. Get home from work, vacuum. Now... Some people, when it comes to backups, some people have automatic backups on their computers and phones. You can also schedule them in many ways. And I always say, if you want to do a, a habit, schedule it on a Friday night. 
then I'll do all the backups then. Because I'm telling you, backing up your stuff <laughs> is very important. Um, there are things in my past that happened where I lost things. So you get the picture. You basically get the picture. It basically, it's sometimes you have to pick a day and a time to create a habit. And these are some things that are regular household things that go on that if you don't do them, it becomes disgusting. <laughs> so, so I'm like, we don't want a disgusting house. We want an organized, clean house. And so these are some things for you to do. Um, think about, like I said, find some days of your own. We will be back in a few moments with more of the Super Organized Universe Radio in our last segment. Thanks for listening. Hold on. neighbor get some sod put in yeah it's marathon yeah that's what i got but yours looks so much greener and thicker than mine what's going on i'm gonna call the growers southland sod farms may i help you my marathon sod doesn't look as good as my neighbors are you sure yours is marathon that's what i asked for let me do a computer search Mm, we don't have a record of your delivery you didn't get genuine marathon sod what do you mean Sometimes unscrupulous contractors, retailers, and other sod farms lead you to think they're selling Marathon, but then substitute a lesser brand. That really tees me off. How could I have known I got a cheap imitation? Look for the bold, genuine Marathon label on the sod pallets when they're delivered. Don't get cheated. Look for the genuine Marathon sod logo displayed by nurseries and landscape contractors at the Yellow Pages. Or call 1-800-4-MARATHON for a free do-it-yourself video and authorized dealer list. That's 1-800, the number 4, then Marathon. Or visit the website at www.sod.com. With containers, there are a couple of things to be aware of. Containers can be heavy and get really hot. A solution I found is the Big Bag Bed from Smart Pots. They're lightweight. No, really, anyone from 3 to 93 can pick one up because they're made from an aeration fabric wholesale nurseries have been using for years. And they breathe, which is an important factor in developing stronger roots. Traditional containers don't do that. Grow this year's garden in a Big Bag Bed by Smart Pots. Found at your local nursery, garden center, and online at smartpots.com. Hi, this is Paul McCartney on behalf of Rad. If you're drinking, you can't drive my car or any car. And remember, don't drink and drive. It's just not worth it. Public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. That was audio of Brian's actual car crash. My car was totaled. You should have gone to Victory Auto Body and Paint, Brian. These guys are fantastic. They work with all the major insurance carriers for the best possible prices. I have personally used them several times, and they do excellent work. Check them out on the web at victoryautobody.com. That's victoryautobody.com. Give my friend Armani a call at 818-842-7789. 818-842-7789. Victoryautobody.com. Do our song, me and Brian's song. We really just got to write some music to it, nice lyric to it. I love it. This is Super Organizer Universe Radio. I'm James Lodge Jr., the Super Organizer. All righty. I just want to hear that song over and over again. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's a lot of 80s music. Well, I mean, I, like I said before, I'm stuck in the 80s, so I love it. That was my time period. I love the 80s. So, folks. As we, as, we, as we come to our last uh, segment, um, I want to actually talk about the difference between organized and neat. That's neat. There's a difference. And I've had some talks about that with other organizers, and we were kind of laughing about that. Because things can look neat. Yeah, the house could look, look like, it could look like it's in order. But it's not. And it's one of those things... Um, that I didn't realize there was a difference until I became an organizer. Um, you can be neat, you're not organized. You can be neatly organized. So there's a you can be all different things. Now here's the thing. Years ago, I had a closet. That closet was the catch-all for everything. 
Um, I had a small place. I lived in a small studio apartment or whatever, and the closet just, like, was ready. So it was one of those things where it's like, don't open the closet. You open the closet, everything's going to fall out. But my house, the, the floors were clean, and the carpets were good, and beds were made, and everything was done. So it looked neat. But then I had this closet that was just crap everywhere in it, um, filled to the gills full of stuff that none of it made sense whatsoever. So that's what I talk about. So you can, so you can, so it's not organized. The closet wasn't organized, but it was just, it was just neat. Um, things can be neatly t- tucked under beds, under spaces. Uh, we all have, a, we all have a tendency to kind of, we can hide things really easy. So it seems neat. So yeah, the desk is cleared off. That's great. But you can't find half things you need because the drawers are all messy. Any of you go, any of you go through that? Where I always say you can have one junk drawer here and there, but what if you're all of your home office, all the drawers are junk drawers? <laughs> Everything is just everywhere. Um, and you're trying to find that paper clip. But you have to go through all the sea of rubber bands and staple, loose staples and you know, things like that. So my point is, yeah, you can, be, you can look neat. Yeah, you know. Neat and tidy is great. I think that I think it's nothing wrong with that at all. On some days, I will admit this, it takes all of our strength to be neat, let alone let alone you know organized. I um we're we're all human and, and in the in the days of the crazy busy, everybody's crazy busy. Sometimes you just have to, you know, you just you have to do what you can do. I mean, we're not superhuman, so I do get that. But of course, when I said before, tying into the beginning. Once, if you get organized all at you know at once and get the systems in place, your life will be easier. But there are times when you need to just be neat a little bit. Um, being neat, just like being organized, can lessen stress and promote happiness. Neat has a place, I believe, within the organization. I think it helps the process and aids the big picture. Like I said, you can be neatly organized. So like, there's things you can do within organization where things are neat and in place. You can start with being neat and move into organization. Because the whole point is you want to be organized. That's the end game, always. But you can start out being kind of neat and then editing as you go along and setting up systems and, and places to become organized. So you can take those drawer, those scissors you have in a random drawer. They're sitting there neatly in a random drawer. But now you can assign them a place to always be stored. See, that's the difference. You can have things, you can have things in drawers even like laying nicely, but if they're all over the house and not in one central location, then you're not organized. Where are those scissors? Where are those scissors? Where are those scissors? That, you eliminate that when they're organized. When you're organized, you know where the scissors are. And... A place that you'll remember. Make sure it's easily accessible. You know, I have a supply drawer that's next to my home office desk. It was, it was like a little set of drawers that I got at the container store or something. And it completely is near where I am. So I can roll my chair over and I have all of my supplies that I need. Like I said, paper clips and staples and tape and all that kind of stuff. It's all right there. My paper for my printer. It's It's neat. And it's organized. I always know to turn to my left. Plus, I'm left-handed, so I like to turn to my left. Turn to the left, and it's right there. Takes two, se- two or three seconds for me. And so my home office looks neat, but it's also organized. And that's kind of the whole point of all of this, is you want to be organized. So I think there's a difference between being neat and organized, and I hope I illustrated that enough for you guys that why I think there's a difference. And uh, so if someone says, you should be neat, yeah, that's fine. But you really should be organized. You know, that's, there you go there. So um, I really believe that. And, of course, I'm just going to reiterate once again the maintenance process of being organized. The goal is to get organized. And while you're doing that, learning how to stay organized. Because you want to be able to keep the area or areas nice for as long as you can. For example, you organize the kitchen. Everything has a place and it's orderly. The countertops are cleared off, and just the essential appliances, like the toaster or coffee maker, are left on the counter. To maintain this, 
You have to put everything back to its assigned spot. Going back to being everything assigned. So when you cook and use the counter, you clean up after you're done, or sometimes you can clean during the cleaning during the cooking process. You don't let things sit out. I'm, and I always say, not even for a day. I don't like, for me personally, I wash my dishes every night. I don't like dishes in the sink. Because the next morning, I'm busy getting ready to go to work and do other stuff. So then they'll sit there again all day, and then more dishes possibly will be added. And then the next night, after I've made dinner, I have a thousand dishes. Unfortunately, I don't have a, I don't have a dishwasher. Maybe in my future at some point. Uh, I have to actually have to hand wash this, so it, it creates more work for me and anxiety, kind of, and it doesn't look good. And even leaving out for it, and there have been times, I will admit this, I will admit this to you guys on the radio, there have been a few times, because I've been super busy, that I've had dishes for two days in the sink. Now, I don't really happen anymore, but there are times in my past where they're in there for two days. Have you ever tried to clean a bowl of dried cereal? You have to scrub. Now, if you clean it up right after you finish eating the cereal, it's super simple. It just wipes right out. But it's crazy. I love some cereal. Yes, Brian? Oh, uh, do you want better than cereal? Yes. What about eggs? Yes. Oh, that that is Ugh. my uh, <laughs> the that is a constant struggle between my mom and I is I, I don't I don't clean my plates after I eat <laughs> a plate of eggs and it's it's a uh, they man, stick. Uh, yeah, they that is an aggressive uh, form uh, of food on plate on plates. Uh, even in pans, like when you are uh, scrambling eggs or whatever, it gets on the for me it gets on the side. You have to like you have to scrub it if you leave it on. It's hard. No, I don't learn my lesson though. No bueno. No bueno for you either. That's no. not good. Clean them eggs. Yeah, you know what I what I did actually, and and this might have been a, a easy way out is that I got paper plates, <laughs> so that way I could just throw them away at the end. <laughs> that is easy. That is an easy way out. Um, yes, but you I still prove my point. Of course, of you do it right away because some foods it's easier to do it when it's when it's first when it's first done than later. And I, eggs is a great example, actually. That's a, the bane of my existence too. It's eggs and cereal. So, thank you, Brian. So that's kind of funny. Yeah, that's I completely. That's another one because it gets it gets all hard and caked on, and just like, oh, I, I hate it so much. Um, but if you leave it even just for a day, for an hour, so it's for an hour. I know, and it's like, and you're like, oh my god, and things multiply fast. I'm sorry, they do. And then egg is egg is one of those foods that. Get stuck on your face and you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, that, that is true. That is well. We, we got I got facial hair, so so do I. Yeah, so I, I always go. Oh, there's something there. Sorry, I don't feel it. Save uh, it for later. Yes, I know how to. I always get hungry. I'm always hungry. Yeah, so <laughs> that's kind of funny. But I just say, you know, don't leave it sitting there. Do it right away. Take care of it, and that's part of the maintenance process. And for some people, maintaining is the hardest part of the whole thing. But hire someone to help you get organized, and they'll help you maintain. You can, you can have them come back once a week. If you want to, and have them help you maintain. The point is, organizers, like tying it back into the beginning, we are here to assist you in running your life the easiest way possible. And we believe that through organization, that can be achieved. I just, I just, I just, I, I will say this to the rest of my unnatural life. I will be saying that organization is the key to a better life. It has changed my life for the better, and I just, I. Love it. So that was another edition of Super Organized Universe Radio. And uh, I will be back next week, of course, and the week after that, and the week after that, and the week after that. And I just want to say to everybody, once again, as I live in thanks and gratitude, thank you so much for all the retweets and all the shares and stuff. So where you can find me, of course, on Twitter, the Super O, or Black Hope LA, which is B-L-A-K-H-O-P-E-L-A. On Facebook, forward slash The Super Organizer. And I have a new page um, that's forward slash James Law Jr. You can follow me on there for all my media exploits. I have my blog, thesuperorganizeruniverse.com, which you can find all of these tips and more. And I do a blog every day, well, at least mostly Monday through Friday. So you can find all that on there. And also on, my, on the Facebook page, The Super Organizer, I post many blogs in there too. I have a YouTube channel. The Super Organizer, James Law Jr., which can follow um, tips and videos and things on there, too. And I'm building that every day. And, of course, the granddaddy of them all, my website, 
thesuperorganizer.com. I've been working on that too, so we're kind of updating that one a little more too to reflect 2015. <laughs> but thank you so much for all everything and the support, and I will see you, well, through the radio next week. Thanks. Thanks.